Welcome to part three of our series of videos looking at brewing the perfect Czech lager at home. Following on from part two, we now take a look at what goes into pouring that perfect Czech lager. There's a vast amount of care and skill that goes into that perfect pour, and we had to take a deeper dive into this integral part of the beer culture in the Czech Republic, all to help you elevate your drinking experience of this style of beer at home. Well, James, we're at Luca, which is the home of the traditional Czech side pour tap, and we're gonna meet Jan, who's gonna talk us through the products that they offer and that we sell, and a little bit about the history of this product. Excellent, that sounds fantastic. Let's go inside, meet Jan, and see what we can learn. Jan, thanks very much for making the time to see us today. As we kind of explained to you, we're here in um, the Czech Republic, trying to understand a little bit more about what makes Czech beer so amazing and awesome. And for me, part of that journey is about the serve of the beer, which you guys are the specialist company in the Czech Republic, in probably the world. So we kind of really want to just come and talk to you about your taps and what Luca does and what makes the Luca side pour tap so special. For us, uh, the serving or pouring part of beer is as important as uh, the brewing part. Because in Czech we say the brewmaster brews the beer, the tapster makes it. Which for us means that you can have great beer uh, brewed great beer, but then if you don't serve it right, if you have dirty beer lines and if you have warm and dirty glasses and you don't know how to use the tap, uh, you can ruin the great beer. But we also believe that uh, on the opposite, you can have like standard beer, which is not bad, which is not great, yeah. but if you take the great care of it and uh, use the tap the way it should be used, and you have perfectly clean glasses and you have perfectly clean beer line and you take care of every step which you are doing, you can positively affect the taste of the beer, also the mouthfeel and other, uh, other factors or other senses of the beer. And that's been part of the Czech culture for a long time? It's been a part of Czech culture for a long time. But I believe it's becoming more and more popular in during the last, let's say, 15 years, when uh, some of the breweries kind of understood this, that serving is as important as brewing, and they started to uh, educate their staff members, and they also started to educate their customers. But it's, it's not just about the theatre and the presentation. It, it actually changes the taste of the beer, doesn't it? Yeah, completely. It's... I know for the people in the UK it might, might sound strange because we say it's all about the foam uh, and usually people um, in uh, other countries they don't believe that foam is drinkable or that foam can be tasty and, and smooth and, and sweet and, and drinkable. So yeah. we believe and we are quite sure that with our tap you can create like a special foam which is dense and creamy and wet and sweet and drinkable and very very good so that's the thing which our taps can make the difference the quality of foam and with all the pours which we prefer we start with the foam in the beginning and we create like a pillow made of this special foam and then we pour beer under this pillow. So this pillow is protecting the beer uh, from oxidation since the very beginning. How's, how's the tap actually working in terms of creating that foam? There are uh, three most important parts of the, of the tap. There is uh, the flow control piston, which we have here. We call it compensator. So here you can regulate the speed of the, of the beer flow coming mm -hmm. into uh, into the ball valve which is inside here and then comes through this outlet pipe into this nozzle where we have a special screen which uh, then kind of cleans the, the foam in the end. The beer is coming through this ball valve which is inside here and when opening the tip just a little bit around maybe 15 to 20 uh, degrees then it starts to produce uh, the foam and the foam then comes through this by outlet pipe. By restricting the way the speed it can come out 
at that angle, it's it's restrict it's creating the foam. Yes, exactly. Yeah, when you when you open it just a little bit, you see, then starts uh, creating the foam, and when you open it full, clear beer is coming through. Here in the in the tap nozzle, there is a micro screen as you can see here, and yeah, the foam coming through the screen is then even like nicer and nicer. So Jan, in front of us, we've got a bit of a timeline here in terms of development of the sideboard tap that we have now from what was the tap that was on pretty much every bar in the Czech Republic. We had this tradition of side pull taps in the Czech Republic for almost 100 years. So during communist times, uh, this is a type of tap which was pretty common almost everywhere, this side pull tap. The difference between this one and what we have now is that it had no flow control, it had no ball valve inside, and it didn't have any screen in the in the nozzle. So if you wanted to uh, really adjust uh, and work with the with the perfect pour, you had to really play with the length of the beer line and with the pressure in the keg, and it was kind of hard to achieve the goal of perfect, uh, perfectly poured hladinka or any other pouring styles, which we have now. So this is what we used to have in the communist times. Then uh, the founder of our company, Mr. Lubomir Kriesel, and his brother, Josef, who used to work for a post called Brewery uh, in, the, in the 90s, uh, they were going to, to a pub called uh, Uzlatého Tigra in Prague. And there was a guy whose name is Karel Hulata, and he was the pioneer of perfect pour in the Czech Republic. He was using these steps and he was trying to get uh, the best out of them. Uh, as I said, using the different lengths of the beer line and the different diameters of the beer line and playing with the, uh, with the pressure in the kegs and trying to pour beer uh, style and, and schnitt and, and chochtan. So he was the pioneer of, uh, of these pours. He was using these, but he had problems uh, with the quality. Uh, they were leaking a lot, and they had to be uh, they had to be repaired very often. Karel Hulata asked uh, uh, our boss, Mr. Lubomir Kriesel, to to repair the taps for him. So they were using some special polishing paste to to repolish the the cone uh, part of this valve inside here but it always worked for a few weeks and it started leaking again. So my, uh, my boss decided to, to develop his own tap. So he was working on, on the prototypes. He started working on it in maybe 1993. And this is the, the very first prototype. You can see the shape of the, of the tap bodies. So many, many beers uh, came through uh, all these prototypes uh, before they could move, uh, move forward. You can see here uh, the stages of development. Uh, here is still uh, the conical valve inside here and no compensator, no flow control. This one has uh, finally the, the compensator uh, Add it to, to the same type of uh, conical valve body. Yeah. And this one finally has the ball valve inside and, uh, and the compensator and the tap screen in the, in the nozzle. We believe that if you take good care of the tap and uh, regularly exchange uh, some of the gaskets and, and ceilings which are inside, the tap can be with you forever, you know? I mean, that is actually one of the really good things about this, is you can actually buy complete kits of the seals, the screens. It's totally serviceable at home, on site, with the parts which you guys supply to us. Jan, thank you so much for your time and talking us through the taps and the benefits of using a Luca tap. Um, I think all that's left now is to go and see it in action and go and grab a beer with you. Thank you. Cheers. My pleasure. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. So we've been to Luca and spoke to Jan about the importance of the side pour tap in the Czech pour. Uh, we're now here at the awesome training centre at Budvar with Radim, who's going to talk us through the pour, the glassware, the cleanliness, 
I will see you, Radim. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, so welcome to our new training center. We not only invest into the equipment, but we also invest into people. So we introduced, we built this uh, training center last year, and this is where our beer tenders come to spend three days with us to get their training and to really take care of, of the product of the beer and to maintain the quality and the standard. So the end consumer gets the best possible for. So where does it start? What's the What's the steps that you go through? It's very simple. So there would be two steps. First one is the glassware. Yeah, so the glassware, I would separate it or branch it into three most important parts. First one is to have the right glassware. Yeah. For example, for Czech lager, we prefer to have our tankards. Not only it's a massive chunk of glass, so when you chill it, it keeps the temperature, but also the wider diameter actually amplifies the multi notes. Very essential. Uh, second step is the cleanliness. So, Beer has two main enemies. First one uh, is oxygen, and second one is grease or fat. So we really need to maintain the, the cleanliness of the glassware because if there is any reminiscence of grease or re remaining grease in the glass, it kills the foam. And don't fear the foam <laughs> because foam is actually the protective layer that keeps all the beautiful flavors inside of beer, but also keeps the, fre the beer fresher for longer. So the third step, very important, is the temperature of the glassware. What many people realize is that uh, the glass should be matching the temperature of the beer which is being dispensed at. The way to describe it, if you make steak, you would never serve st steak at a cold plate, so you would never serve cold beer into warm glass. Yeah? Also, it actually maintains the temperature and keeps the beer, again, fresher for longer. So the glassware, very important. The second step is the pour. And for that, uh, we've already been to Looker, you met Jan, my friend. Uh, yeah, the Looker tab is what makes the best possible exp drinking experience for, for the drinker, for the consumer, for everyone who enjoys beer. So shall we get, jump to it? Yeah, shall we go through it? We always start with washing the glass. So you take your glass. Uh, in Czech Republic, we do hand washing. It's quite essential. So we're using a sponge as well as this uh, uh, equipment here called Spielboy. And the sponge that we use is only used for glassware. It's not used for anywhere, anything else. So we make sure we've got a, the right uh, sanitizing solution. We scrub it and then we just do the rims because rims is where the fat, the grease stays. So we need to make sure it's all evenly washed and then we rinse the glass so there's no soap or sanitizing solution. And then we put it in the bath which sits at 4 degrees Celsius. So what it does is basically it chills the glass and again, it matches the temperature of the beer being dispensed at. So you're matching the temperature, very important. So I'll reach for the already chilled one. You rinse all the water out and then comes an extra step, which is the rinsing. You could possibly skip the rinsing, but for us it's tradition, just in case there will be something in the water. And also the rinsing reduces the surface tension. Quite essential. So after that, we need to make sure there's no water. And then we're coming to the next step, which is the looker tap. Yeah, so the look, looker tap operates at very simple 90 degrees, 0 to 20. If you open it just a little bit, you've got a foam coming out. 20 to 90 degrees, you've got a beer coming out. So in the pouring, what you want to achieve is that you put the tap in the bottom of the, of the glass. You're drawing the foam, creating the protective layer and then you pour the beer underneath the layer. So when we are talking about the two main enemies of the beer, the grease and the oxygen, so we're basically not exposing the beer to any oxygen because we are creating the layer, the protective layer. So starting very simply, we open just a little bit, put the foam at the bottom, keeping the spout in the beer and then opening it fully. And then we go all the way up and narrowing the glass all the way. And once you to the top, you stop it and without letting dripping back that's your beer that looks fantastic <laughs> okay martin so i've just shown you how to use the looker tap the looker cycle tap but actually here in budvar we believe that for our beer the best pour is a two-step pour so what it actually does is that it reduces the amount of co2 and it elevates the malt multi notes or as we like to call it, the harmony between the maltiness and bitterness. It starts fairly simple. Clean glass, chilled and rinsed. And, and again, starting with the foam of creating the protective layer. Again, in the middle, in the bottom. And you pour the beer just underneath it. And once you get it two thirds, you stop it. 
and let it sit on the side without letting it drip back. What this does is that the CO2 starts to escape. So therefore, you're reducing the amount of CO2, so you bring out the drinkability, but also the protein matrix in the head thickens up, so it creates stable head retention. So again, the longer the head stays on the beer, the fresher the beer remains. Yeah, so quite essentially. So the 30 seconds in, and then basically you submerge the spot all the way in and just open it fully until you get the, the right measure. There we go. So wow. the difference between one step and two step pour is uh, the one step pour complements more bitter beer, more bitter Czech lagers. But us in Budvar, we've got around 22 IBU for most of our beers. So it actually complements the two step pour. But that's not it. There are also other pours. So what are these other pours you talked about? The other pour would be called taster. So historically, when the beer tester comes to work, he needs to check the quality of the beer. Obviously, we like to drink the beer, but testing the quality for the beer tender is super essential. So we start starting with a little bit more foam than usual, open it fully, and then literally, once the finger away from the top, you should be having two fingers of beer, three fingers of foam, and one finger left from the top. So this would be the taster. Would you like to taste the taster? <laughs> that foam's really wet. It's very wet. It's not full of CO2 or what? And again, reflecting on what the answer, the wet foam is what brings out the texture, brings out the creaminess of the beer, so like brings out the drinkability. Yeah, you could easily smash that. I'm going to regret this. Are there any other types of pour? Absolutely. And the next one is actually one of my favorite, or not, if not the most favorite one. It's called the milk or the mleko pour. So it's fairly simple. Again, you get a chilled, clean rinse glass. And then you open the looker tap just a little bit to get the foam. And you keep on pouring. So this beer, as, you o as you're opening the tap just a little bit, you're agitating the, uh, the beer and you keep degassing it. So you're getting less carbonation and brings out the drinkability. And so this beer historically would be the refresher. As you're degassing it, it doesn't have the, it doesn't force you to release all the gas. So wow. historically this would be the refresher. So you're rushing for the bus. Yeah, you need to do something to get refreshed and the Miko would be the pour. Yeah very essential to drink it at one go to get a refreshing note. You're expecting me to drink that in one Absolutely go? Absolutely, I didn't. <laughs> no, that's impossible. Impossible. <laughs> Radim, thank you so much for taking us through the different types of pour. Now, this is a beautiful setup, but People don't have this at home, so can you give some tips and advice on how to make sure that the beer that you're spending so long brewing is also served to this beautiful standard? Absolutely. Like, I'm glad you mentioned that you know, brewing the beer takes quite some time, so it's really necessary to nail all the steps of the serving to enjoy your beer to the maximum, to, to its maximum capacity. So in order to do that, uh, we need to do two very essential steps. First one is to clean your beer lines and clean your tap. Ideally, you would, you would like to clean your lines before every keg and maybe once a month, yeah, take apart the tap. Yeah, very essential, flush it with a the, uh, the cleaning solution, then with water and make sure that part of the pour is spot on. Second one, the glassware, obviously this setup you would find in a Czech pub. Uh, for us at home, what's quite essential is to Get the right glassware, wash it with the unscented dish soap. Yeah, so we really, we don't want any flavor, any, we don't want your beer taste like cherry. So we really want to use unscented dish soap and very essential is to use a sponge. Always use a new sponge or all, always use the sponge that is dedicated only to glassware. You don't want the sponge to be using on a hop or, you know, dirty dishes, just just for the glassware. You, you don't want to transfer the grease from elsewhere into your glass. Um, the third part would be keeping the glasses cold. Yeah, and that's very essential as well because we really, match the te we really want to match the temperatures of, of the beer and the glassware. So my practice that what I do at home before I serving the beers is that I take the glass, 
fill it up with water and put it in the fridge for an hour. Quite essential. If you, in a time pressure, you just fill up the glass with ice, water, and put it in the fridge as well. So it speeds up the process a bit. Uh, the things to avoid is to put your glass or any glassware into the freezer. So what the freezer would do to, to your beer or to your experience is that the temperature of the glassware will be so low that it mutes all the beautiful flavors that you've been working on for quite some time. And we want to avoid that. So never ever, never ever put the glassware into the freezer. And then if you really want to elevate the drinking experience, you really need to invest into your taps. Yeah? So the Looker tap, it's the Rolls Royce in the beer pouring. Once you have that, you can nail all the different pours that I showed you today, but you can really elevate the quality of the beer. As you heard Adam talking about, you know, if you spend lots of time creating the best product, you want to use the best to serve it to get the best experience. And for me, the Looker tap is what, what does the best drinking experience. All of this advice is just absolutely gold. Um, definitely stuff to take home and have a think about. Um, cheers, thanks cheers. very much for your time, mate. <laughs> Our time in the Czech Republic has come to an end. However, the journey continues. Next week, we'll be applying everything we've learned and brewing our own version of this fascinating beer style. Then, by the magic of video editing, we'll be doing a tasting session of our finished beer. So make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on so you don't miss the culmination of this epic homebrewing journey into Czech lager.